Okay, so we're, we're back at York. We're going to fit this laminate flooring. Um, it's going to run throughout both rooms. There's 28 square meters in here. Um, we're going to use this underlay. It's a fiber board. It's from B&Q. It's not a bad stuff to be fair. Uh, we don't need to put a moisture barrier down with our building. It's off the floor. So we'll use that underlay. We're going to get that down on there. And then we're going to fit this flooring. What we're going to do. Um, normally I'd start at the back, but because it's two rooms, I'm shouting again now. <laughs> normally I'd start at the back, but because it's two rooms and we want the rooms to run through without putting a joint in strip, so we're going to start at the front on this one and push that way with it so that when we get to here, then we can split and go that way, because otherwise we'd be coming this way and then we'd have to return the floor back that way, which is not impossible, but it's just a pain in the ass. So we're going to bang it down that way first, we're going to go there, once we get to there, I'll then jump onto that room, Jenny will jump onto this room and we're going to have a little race. Jenny has not done laminate flooring before, have you Jenny? I haven't. In no. you come. First time. At the light. So this is Jenny's first time at laminate flooring. She says she's good at scribing skirting boards though. So, because this room is rhombus shaped, because we've, um, we've made the building to fit his garden basically, so we've got rhombus corners. Um, so Jenny's going to have a go on the architrave as well. Architrave? Architrave. Architrave. Um, and possibly fit this door frame and we're going to have a little go at scribing skirting boards with a jigsaw, mm -hmm. a chainsaw, <laughs> a coping saw yep. and an angle grinder. Yep. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, I'm going to get a full tutorial of us fitting this floor as well. Okay, so we're going to put this spundle down. Didn't I just open the back of that? Yeah. Yeah. Right, what we're going to do, we're going to put two rows of underlay down. Um, they recommend to lay this in a brick pattern so your joints are staggered. Um, it's easily cut with a Stanley knife. So what we're going to do is, Jenny come over here. There's your first piece. What we're going to do though, um, I don't know if you can just see that. Probably see it now. Um, I want the underlay to go tied to the door. So what we're going to do first is cut off a piece like such there you go a piece off there like that and then that will enable that to push back to there um, what I'll do then I'll get another piece and the lay it under there so what I'm going to do Jenny is create that angle uh -huh. yeah I'm going to cut off too much of that again Christmas yet, but I want to raise £50,000 for candle lighters, which shouldn't be that difficult. We raised £10,000 on the last one and £5,800, I think, on the one before that. So I have already started to amass the prizes. There's DeWalt, there's um, what is there? Milwaukee, there's Makita. What we're going to do, we're going to give a few prizes out um, rather than just winner takes it all. Tickets will be £2 as always and every single penny will go back to candle lighters because I'm funding the prizes out of YouTube money. So the more you watch my YouTube, the more I can put into the prizes and just try to give a little bit back. Okay? You alright, Jimmy? Yeah. So what we're doing, we're staggering the joints. I don't know if you can see that. I'll have a quick look, see what's just visible. Yeah, staggering the joints on this underlay, and then we'll start to lay the floor. Um, right, you know what I'm doing, yeah? 
Right, so we've not put the door frame in here, you can see the door frame's not gone in, which will aid putting the flooring down, it makes it a lot easier because we can run straight through, we can cut it round the legs there, and then when the casing sits down you won't see the expansion joint, because as always you need to leave an expansion joint. What we do when we build ours, we leave our plasterboard 20mm off the floor, but we still leave 10mm expansion for the floor, so if it is going to move, it's still got another 20mm to go, which is more than needed. Um, and the skirting board will obviously cover the expansion gap as well. So once we've got these full two rows, then what we're going to do, we're going to see whether the floor starts on the left side or the right side, depending on who's manufactured it. And then we'll get a few rows down, and then I'll show you how we're going to progress from there. Okay, so this laminate flooring, it's got a little blue strip in there. What happens is this next one pops down, that little blue slip, then clicks into the other one and holds it in place. So that means this floor is laid left to right. So basically, all we're going to do, we're going to get this first row to fit, and then the offcut from over there jumps on the here. Very much like when you do the Agri Protect flooring or you do the OSB free roofing board. Right, so this piece here, you can see there now, obviously that's square and that's the rhombus shape of the room. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to create that detail there, but first of all, we need to create that to go back to there. So because we've left our extra 20 mil under there, what we're going to do first. We're going to scribe that to the shape there. We're going to cut that off and then we're going to get that within 10 mil of that wall. And then I will then determine that cut there. I'll measure that there and I'll transfer that cut to there. Um, so that's it. Once I've cut that one, I'll then re-show you this one. Right. Yeah, right. So you can see there, look, I've created the rhombus shape of the room. So what I need now is for that laminate flooring to go back that way. What I'm going to do, I'm going to measure it off there. It's 60 mil off there. They're looking for a 10 mil expansion gap. So that means if I draw my line there and then take 50 mil off there, like that. This is a finger scribe. You lock your pencil on there. My fingers are locked now. That will transfer that 50 mil mark all the way up there. It's called a finger scribe. So when I cut that out now, that will be our first piece. It will pop in there. Then what we'll do, we'll cut the second piece, we'll move along. But as we're going to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to follow behind with Jenny and I'm going to start on this row. So she'll go with that first row and I'll follow behind. Because when you're doing your first two rows, if you can get a full board that joins the first joint, it's a lot easier to get your boards straight and in line and working out. And one, <laughs> one more thing I want to tell you before we go on with this. Um, laminate floor, and if you read the pack, they tell you to measure the room because you don't want to end up with a little strip over there. So they tell you to take so much off this side so that you're left with a decent cut over there. I've been fitting floors for a long, long time and I've never ever done that once. And I've never got to the other side before. Oh, balls. <laughs> right, so just go for it and off you go. That's my advice to you. Right, so what I'm going to do, I've already cut the piece there. I've scribed it to the wall. Um, I've got my rhombus shape. So that's going to make the next piece in there. What Jenny's going to do now, she's going to go ahead of me, clicking them into place and then I'll follow her. And once we've got two solid lines going through, what I'm going to do then, I'm going to put all that laminate floor on top of there to weigh it down so it doesn't move because I never use packers, I know it says to use packers and pack it off but you don't need to because laminate floor this day is pretty well clicked together and it works pretty well. So we'll use the weight of the laminate floor to hold it in place, we'll shoot through the tool there and just another point, I've got, <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute what happened as well, this will make you laugh. I've got all these packs of laminate flooring but what you want to do, you don't want to just use one pack at a time because if there's a slight variation in the colours, you'll have a solid block running through your floor, which Jenny knows to her. Um, so when you've fit a floor through before and she's got a strike down the middle of her kitchen or living room, whatever, I don't know, so I've never been to her house. Um, <laughs> kitchen? Bedroom? Bedroom. Bedroom. Okay, well definitely don't know. <laughs> and it runs all the way down. So what you need to do is take bits of laminate flooring from various packs and then if there is a colour variation, you won't ever see it. Uh, Right, so Jen's going to now cut this bit with John's Milwaukee jigsaw, that's never been used. You can tell. Yeah. Um, it's for this piece here, which is probably the trickiest cut on the laminate flooring. And once we get there, I can start working across then and follow Jenny through. So we've, we've got various rows down now. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. We've put the floor on there to stop it sliding. Like I said before, I don't bother with packers. Um, we haven't got our door frame on, so we've still got our 10 mil clearance around there, which will allow the floor to naturally expand. When the door frame sits on, it will sit over there. The architrave will cover that, and the skirt will cover the rest. So what's happening now is I've got this side done. I'm 
I'm now going to get this room here with Jenny. Jenny's going to blast forward with that room. I'm going to do the big room, and then that will be the laminate flooring fit. Um, John's going to do the cut. So we're almost finished now. We're getting there. Um, I've never finished this room. Jen's almost finished this room. Last piece going in Jen's room now. Yep. Then we're done. There you go. Beautiful. How was that for you? Perfect. Let's get ready. Let's get ready. Right. right, so we've got the laminate flooring down, we've left this expansion gap all around. What we're going to do now, we're going to do the skirting board and I'll give you a little tutorial on the skirting board. So, what you want to do, you want to start off with your biggest wall first, put a square cut in. This is the biggest wall in this room, so we're going to put a square cut of skirting board. That means like both ends will be square and then I'll show you how we're going to scribe the corners. What's the measurement? Oh, wait until you do that. Right, just keep it going, John, I'll just edit it out. Right, so Jen's going to sharpen the measurement, I'm going to put the skirt in. Right, so there you go, I've got a square cut on both ends. What's going to happen now, I'm going to offer it in first, if yeah. Jenny moves out of way. A mesh, a mesh, a mesh. A mesh. A mesh. A mesh. A mesh. A mesh. And make sure it fits before we go to glue it. What's so, it? because this room is a rhombus, right, so it fits. It's white, we're going to cork it, it's going to get painted up. If it's a little bit small, it's not the end of the world. But it does fit. But what you need to do when you glue it and pin it, you need to push it down because the laminate floor, can you see the flex in the laminate floor? So if you push it down like that when you pin it and glue it, we're going to pin it every 400. We are going to glue it with instant nails. The water based adhesive. It's going to shoot down there like that. Then we're going to. Offer it back up to the wall, like that. Jenny, it's going to be a bit tighter with your measurement next time. Yep. Right, so we're going to push it back like that. We're going to use this bit of cedar here. If you put downward pressure on there, then it's down. Can you, just, you see it's down to the floor, John? I'm putting downward pressure on there. It's down flat on the floor. Pushed it back. Jenny's going to double pin it. Bum, bum, there and there. Battery's not in. Cool. Let's give it. Let's give it. I am, yeah. Hey, see that look? I see that. That's it. Punch it back to the wall, Jenny, if it's not going. Right, so while she's putting that wall on, this is now the next wall to do. We're not going to do the door walls yet, simply because we've got to do the reveals, but I'll show you them as well. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the wall. 2,892. John follows me up. 2,892. 2,892. Right, so, this side is going to butt up to the wall that she's just done. Now, there's a few ways of doing this, but the correct way to do it is for the scribe. Get it right. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna now cut that off. So that, that, if that's the other wall, it sits in there. So you see I've cut that back at a 45 degree angle. What I'm now gonna do is cut all that brown off there, but I'm gonna back cut it as well. So that, that sits in there, around there, John. So that, that sits in there and you'll have an internal scribe. So I'm going to use a coping saw in a minute. Um, right, I'm going to use a coping saw. Jenny started, you do a, what's it called, jigsaw. She can also do an angle grinder and she's going to have a go with chainsaw, no? Yeah. Right, so what I'm going to do, look, you can see the angle there. I'm back cutting it. Hopefully the blade won't snap. Right, so as I get to the corner, right, what I don't want to do, I don't want to leave all that on there because it ends up being like a little bit of paper and it looks a dog. So I'll show you where I'm going to finish it. You can see the angle I'm cutting back. What I'm going to do now is keep cutting through. There. It just goes around this side. Around this side, maybe. You see, so that, it's that the bit that Jenny's just put on. That's the bit I've scribed. 
that will then go into there and see so okay. re regardless are you not are you stopping that no, no 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 regardless of what angle you've got on that wall because we have got a rhombus it still works look yeah whereas if i did it this way around if i create a 45 like that that's all good and well obviously i do it the way that's all good and well if your angle is 45 degrees but generally they're not so if you're open like that you're gonna have a, ga a gaping gap a gaping gap you're gonna have a wide on maybe <laughs> a wide and if it's too tight you're gonna have a gap at the back so striving it is the best way to do it so what i've done i've cut that on there now and i'm gonna flip it over the measurement was 2892 i'm gonna measure from there this is all in one take so if it goes wrong 2892 is that what i said 2892 hopefully now when i offer this one up that should now fit so if john goes over there we'll offer it in place so there i'm, I'm good on this end i'm okay on that end now there, what Jenny's giving me the measurement is slightly too short, but that will cock up and it will be absolutely fine. And that's the way to do yourself an internal scribe. Um, if it was hardwood, then you'd obviously take a little more time with it and get a better detail. But once that's corked up, I'll show you when John's painted it and corked it and it'll look mint. So we're going to carry on with that now. Jenny's going to fix that one and we're going to jump into the big room and I'll show you how to make a door frame. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to put this um, door frame in. Um, because of the 2.5 height limit, you can't get a regular door height in, that's just the way it is. But you see, we've got a pitched roof because we've created the maximum internal height you can have. But it's just going to be shy of an internal door height, which is 78 inches. I've got 79, but by the time my frame's in, and I've got my gap on the floor on the top, we'll have to take a bit off the door, but not much. But that's just the way it is. So we're going to make this housing for this um, door frame, this door frame rather. Um, I prefer to make my own. Um, simple reason is that I just prefer that rather than buying a door pack frame and it'll be twisted and shit. We'll just get some straight timbers. I'll show you how to house it out and make it. And I'll try and avoid swearing as well. Right, so I've got 90 mil on my wall. So I'm going to make sure that my door frame is the same size as well. Uh, it's not looking like it is, I won't lie. I've obviously told Adam to get the wrong one. Oh no, he's got the right one. Um, it's about 92 mil. So, I know the door is 33 inches. So if John comes round here, what I'm going to do, I'm now going to make the housing for the door frame. So, I've cut an off cut there. I'm going to drop that in there. Oh shit. I'm going to drop that in there like that. So that there will be my first leg. So what I need to do now is adjust the depth of this saw, which is like that. So you can see there now, when that saw cuts, it's not going to cut all the way through. Yeah, see that, John? Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pack it off a little bit. And the reason why I'm going to pack it off a little bit is because obviously the blade is circular and it won't cut to the full end. So if I pack it off enough like that, then I'll get the full depth of the cut all the way through. quickest way to house out a door frame you can do it with the chisel and the tenant saw but times have moved on since then your leg will sit in there like that we'll then screw it through the head that will secure the leg and the architrave will then cover the gap right so i know that i've got a 33 inch door so what i'm going to do i'm going to put my, my little leg in there and then i'm going to mark 33 inches on the frame there you go Right, I've got a 33 inch door, but I need a 3 mil gap either side of the door to allow it to close properly. So there is my 6 mil, which is 3 plus 3, obviously. I get my square. And that there will be the start of the first leg. So I'll get that leg out again. I'll put that on there on the line. Drop that. So what I'm going to do now is take that bit out as well.
there you go. So when my other leg goes in there then, that will be the other leg. I'll then cut that off there and that will be my house door for it. Right, so I know my legs are 90 and 90. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut both of these at 1990. Oops. So both of them are 1990. Like I say, I prefer to use this plain timber rather than the door casing because them door casings you get in packs are generally bent and twisted. So, what will happen now? That leg will go on there like that, that leg will go on there, we'll put that in, we'll make sure it's flush, we'll make sure it's tight up there, we'll put two screws through there and then cut that bit off, we'll do exactly the same on that one, we'll put two screws through there and cut that off and so I know, I've know i got a mate called John, <laughs> shall I name check him on him? I've got a mate called John Doherty. Um, he does house bashing and what he likes to do is use a second fix pin through there so when he fixes his door frame if his head's slightly out he can tap it up so when you buy any new Barrett homes and your door frames fucking fall oh, when you buy any new door frames in, in when, <laughs> when you buy any Barrett home or whatever home it is other homes are available of course um, and your door frames are all over the place you know why because they're on price and they're blasting it and rushing it around so what Jen's going to do now she's going to fix the leg to the head so she needs to get it so it's flush and it's tight back there can you see that little gap i've obviously rushed it a little bit and i've not made my housing super tight but it's flush there what she's going to do now is send a four inch screw straight through there like so and then she'll send another one um and that that's basically that's that leg it's fixed it's never going to move again right so second leg again um there's the screws, go on Jenny. I've got that nice and flush now. Right, and then she's going to put the last one in there. I'll get the handsaw. Jenny, put a bit of weight on for me. Uh -huh. yeah. I've got it on my foot, Jen. So what I'm going to do now, I'm then going to cut the lugs off the frame. Jenny should pick the frame from there to make sure she can't screw it to the floor. Because <laughs> if she had, we would have a problem. So what I'm going to do now is just run that saw down there. The box I don't hit the floor. So what I'll do now, I'll get that bit there. I'll pop it under there because I know that's got a little bit of height on it then. Okay, so that's, that's your casing made basically. Um, good solid casing. Right. <laughs> moment of truth. We have a moment of truth, right? See if we've measured it correctly. And oh, we have. Right. So what we're going to do, um, we've got a gap either side, the reason why we've got a gap either side is because if we've built our walls and they're not perfect, at least we can plumb our door frame and get our door frame so it's perfect. Obviously I could try to go around there and cover that gap then. What we're going to do, we're going to create the opening and make sure it's exactly plumb and level with each other. I'll show you how to put a door casing in as well. You can see the laminate floor there, even if I push it right tight back, we've gone over the gaps that we created, the expansion gaps, so you're not going to see them. The architrave and the skirting board will cover the rest. So that's it, that's your door casing made. Um, and Jen's going to fit it now. <laughs> door is 34mm, so I know you're supposed to put double fixing, double fixing, double fixing. But what we're going to do, we're going to drop a line of fixings down behind where the stop bead goes. So that line there is where the door will stop. There'll be a stop lap there for there. So what we'll do, we'll screw them screws through there. The stop lap will go over there and then cover the screw holes. What we've also done, we've marked where the fixings are on the wall so that we don't screw through and hit the fixings. Um, right, so Jenny's good to go there. We use a small architrave so it just looks a better detail. Um, so what I need to do is make sure that I can cover my gap with my architrave. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna pack that frame off like that, get that one plumb, and then we're gonna go off the other side and then our architrave will still cover that gap. So, this is the, I mean, I always fix the hinge leg first um, because that's, that's the one that you want dead right and good. So, well, you see, we put the packer close to where she's going to screw. 
right because it's a fixed section of wood it hasn't twisted it in if you use a thinner section it'll pull the door frame in right so what we're going to do now we're going to get the level on there and we can see the head wants to come out considerably like that so what i'll do then i'm going to use two triangle packers like that Sli i'm going to slide one behind the other and as i push them like that it will then push the door frame out so what i'm going to do is go like that and then i'm going to put that on there and i can see i mean can you see that john yeah so that, that i've like literally put it in like that and it's absolutely bang on no, 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 bang on straight away so what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure that that casing is equal on that wall and i'm happy now jen's going to screw that which will then trap them right so that's that if she screws that now you see that'll flex which is what we don't want so what we're going to use now is again triangle wedges i'm going to screw it behind push them like that i'm going to make sure that my frame is dead straight on my level which it is ah you see there look it's pulled in a little touch mm -hmm. see there look so what we're going to do jenny's going to release that screw and i'm going to push them wedges in a touch so she's going to back it out a little bit Now screw it up again now. Go on. Yeah, so that's better now. So that's trapped that. Right, so what we'll do now, we'll go down there like we said we were gonna. We'll push them wedges in just enough to just get a grip. Make sure my frame, so my frame is dead in line with my level there, so I know my level is straight. So she's then gonna send them home. Okay, we're gonna do the same down there, and then I'm gonna show you how we're going to line these two legs through and make sure that when your door shuts it shuts exactly down the line of the door frame so we've got that leg fixed and it's plumb what we need to do now is get this leg so it's plumb with that leg because if you don't let's say it's out to exaggerate like that when your door shuts it'll be touching at the top but it'll be sticking out at the bottom sorry cameraman's phone's great and i call you later Okay, so we've got that leg fixed, we know it's plumb and straight. So what we need to do now is get this leg plumb and straight. So to exaggerate, if it's like that, when your door shuts, it will be touching at the top, but won't be touching at the bottom. So we need to get that leg in line with that leg. The way we do that is, is I don't know if John can quite see this, but you need to stand back there, John. No, right, so I'm gonna get that corner of the frame, yeah, in line with that corner of that frame. And then what he's gonna do is gonna look up and that gap there should be parallel with that corner of that frame there, all the way to the top. Mold your head. Right. And then, if Try it again. is, then you know that your door is shut, look like. Yeah. Isn't it? I think I did that. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, just stand there. So what we're going to do now, we're going to make sure that this measurement there is parallel all the way down, so when the door shuts, it's got an even gap both sides. We're going to pack that out. Once we know that frame is correct and good to go, then we're going to finish with our architrice and our skirting boards and pull them out. So that's this casing in, we've wedged it out. What Jenny's doing now, she's firing a few pins on all the, um, all the wedges in place because we haven't got any foam. What we normally do is expand in foam that up, but we haven't got any, so... Kind of well. so what I'm going to do then... I'm going to go around and I'm going to cut all the wedges off. And then that will allow... That will allow our architrave to get that. done it for years like that it works the door will shut it'll be perfect and it'll be like that forever i'm not fitting a church door at the york minster cathedral i'm fitting a door in a garden and i said all that without taking a breath <laughs> right i'm going to put architrize on this door now um i'm not going to sweep door first which some people do um so that they can get their gap perfect i'm going to put architrize on because i know that it's parallel we've measured it right left leg right leg and the head. I am right handed and I always do my left leg first and some people don't. And I, I don't know, I suppose it's up to you but preference for me is left leg first. So that gap there is called your quirk. Whether you want that 5mm, 10mm, 7.5mm, 6.5mm, 4mm, 3mm, whatever you want, I'm not going to be bothered. But what we're going to do, we're going to draw the line down there like that. So we know when we take that off that's our quirk, yeah? 
So we're going to put our left leg into place like that. I've already cut it square at the bottom. I'm pushing it down to the laminate floor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to transfer that line onto there so that the quirk is the same. I'm going to hold the architrave there. I'm going to mark it there like that. And then I'm going to put a mark on it like that so I know which way it's going to go. I am then going to smash the ceiling like. I'm going to put the left leg on like that. I'm going to draw that line like that. I'm going to draw that quirk through there. That's opened up a little bit. It doesn't matter because it's going to get caught and painted. So again, I'm pushing that down to the floor. I put my line there. I put my mark like that. So I know that one is right. I'm then going to offer my head up. This is to save as many tricks to the saw as possible. I am then going to mark that like that. I'm going to mark that like that. I'm going to mark that there and that there there. So there basically I've got four cuts which will be my archetype. Now, various ways of doing this, you can cut it, super glue it and stick it on the floor, which I know a lot of house builders do now. Um, and I think we'll do that there, yeah? Should we make it my room floor? Yeah. Yeah? Right, so I'm gonna cut them. They're a 45 degree angle, obviously. Make sure it's pushed back to the bed. Roll that one over, because I can see my line there, I've got two lines for some reason, there we go, one line. nice which it does it looks nice enough for me anyway so Jen yeah have you got pin gun as well please have pin gun Adam so what I'm gonna do magic mitre you can use wood glue Jen thank you I'm gonna put that glue on there like that I'm gonna activate that side it's two part activator magic mitre when they touch each other they stick um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get that like that and then clamp them together like that a bit more activator on there hold them for a couple of seconds and hopefully that will have glued um, which it has and then I'm going to put a pin through there which will hold that side I'm going to leave that plastic on there like I say, you can see the the glue's obviously seeped through and gone on the plastic, which we didn't want it going on the floor. Um, I suppose if you hadn't had your floor down, you'd be just doing it on the, on the uh, egg and protect, which would be fine, but we don't want to damage it. So, loads of activator. Again, I'm going to offer that up into place, get it somewhere near, and then marry it up. Ta -da! Jenny's going to spray it and push it together. Keep it clamped, give it a few seconds. So, my packs are available, there's 13 different sizes at www.oakwoodgardenrooms.com, £96, and you can build a garden room exactly the same specification as we do, which I have no doubt are the best in the country. Right, that's glued that as well. And then gonna pin that, um, put that on there before I kick that over and it'll go for guaranteed. Right, so I know if you're watching this and you're a chippy, and maybe you're doing house bashing and this is the way you're doing it. It is still quite fragile like glue, so you want to be a little bit careful. I'm going to offer that into place. I'm going to get my left leg right first. What I'm going to do is push that down, pin through, pin through, pin through. Left leg, right leg down. Make sure that's what I'm going to do because it's twisting in a bit like that, so I'm going to double pin that there to stop it. 
stop any pressure on that when I push this leg across. Oh, and opening it up. Where's my foot on? Is that alright? Right, there you go. So what I'll do, I'll continue up pin that. That's your arch drive on your door frame. Jenny will do exactly the same to the same standard on this side. And now we can arch drive along there. Start to arch drive there, and we're going to do them door reveals as well. Right, door reveals, door arch drives. Uh, there's a couple of ways to do this. You can get them plastered, but that means you've got to have your doors in before your plaster arrives, and it creates a mess. So what we do, we create a timber reveal. It's made out of a bit of MDF skirting board, just ripped down. It's already had the first coat of paint on. So that reveal goes on there. It's fixed to the timber frame. Then the arch drive goes round, and then that finishes your door. So you can see now it's starting to come to an end. Customers had his bar delivered. Which will be a nice little feature. So if you have to come back to this one when it's completed, it's going to have a fully glazed door here. We're going to do these architrives and reveals round here. We'll do the architrives and reveals round there exactly the same, except we'll put on a little mini window board there as well to finish that detail. Um, and that's it basically. So that's this job, architrive and skirting board. Oh, one more thing, we're just going to have a little blast on scribing with different various tools before we go. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to use a different method of scribing in the skirting board. What we're going to do is a different method of scribing in skirting board. Um, we're going to use a coping saw, we're going to use an angle grinder with a sanding flapping disc. Is that what it's called, John? Flat flapping disc, disc. Flat yeah. disc. We're also going to use the Milwaukee jigsaw with the little blade. It's got a special name for that, John, as well. Yeah. I don't know the name. And we're also going to use the still chill, the still chainsaw just to see what it's like. So Jenny's going to go first with the angle grinder. Ready? Pull it a bit closer there, Jenny, so you've got more control. Uh huh. Oh shit! Let me just start. Again. Oh, no, go on, go for it. You've got to go for it. Offer it up, are you ready? Or not? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. This is your own shot. Right, so this is with the grinder. There you go. Wow. So it's, it's not bad to be fair. <laughs> if all we want a fraction out of the top just because it's a little bit step there. Right, that's that's your angle grinder. So recut the 45. I'm gonna use the coping saw now. I don't know if you want to compare times. There, we happy wow. with that? Okay, <laughs> right, that's the coping saw. Um, on a par, I'm probably out more out of breath than Jenny is, but the both were pretty good. Both on a similar, on a similar time. Jenny's now going to use the jigsaw. Jigsaw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Left handed, so it's a bit difficult. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've used my right hand. Jenny, why don't you flip it? Go around that side. Oh. <laughs> Jenny's just getting into we'll just position. Edit, just edit that bit out. No, no. Hold on, because I can't. Do you want me to hold it? She left hands it. Yeah, I can't be near. Still pretty good. Bit of cork at look mint, won't it? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. One bad for your first attempt. You didn't have the jigsaw on full speed, that's fine. Right. Glasses. Somebody hold it. No chance. Yeah. I want to go with Jane, so. I do. John, you can't cut from full speed. Right, now we're going to have a go. Go for the chainsaw.
Move that way, Jen. <laughs> Hang on, don't move that while I see. Two minutes, yep, go. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Four different ways of cutting. Four different ways. I'm cutting your arm off. <laughs> right, you don't want to compare that to Rob Clement, and I don't go for it. Thank you.